Joining me now, Ben Shapiro, editor-in-chief of DailyWire.com. He was talking about this today on his podcast and writing about it as well. Um, ben, what do you make of what's going on so far? Well, I think that the president has made some actually well-placed critiques with regard to, for example, the spending of our NATO allies on their own defense, and also with regard to Germany's reliance on Russian natural gas. And the real question is, is, is that motivated by a desire to sort of crack NATO, or is that really motivated by a desire to strengthen NATO? Because if the idea here is that we want our NATO allies to be stronger in their own defense, and that relieves pressure on us, uh, and if the idea is that Germany shouldn't make itself subject to Russian whim, I agree with that. If the idea is that this is sort of a misdirect, that he's just criticizing these countries because he doesn't like NATO generally, which is the, the kind of nastiest possible read on, on Trump's activity, uh, then that obviously is bad. We can't tell yet is the answer. And I think that the idea that the United States is going to precipitously pull out of NATO, I, I just don't see that happening. I don't think his advisors are interested in that happening. I'm not sure the president is interested in that happening. But we're not going to know a lot until he actually sits down with Putin. And we probably won't know a lot about the fallout from this for a few weeks after all of these events are over. Yeah, it, very true. And I, I want to talk to you about the Putin meeting in just a moment. But when you look at this NATO situation, you know, I always feel like you have to kind of peel back and look at what's actually happening. And while they haven't written the checks yet to fill that 2% level, he left there with an agreement on their part to do exactly that. So what you've got going into the Putin meeting is an increase in troops, NATO troops, and an increase in by 30 to $40 billion is the estimate to support those troops. That Vladimir Putin's got to be looking at that across the border and saying, that's formidable. Well, that, that's exactly right. This is why it's sort of bizarre to suggest that Trump was making a pro-Putin move by encouraging all of these countries that border Russia to increase their defense spending. I mean, if, if Latvia and, and, and yeah. Lithuania and Estonia are all increasing their defense spending, I'm not sure how that benefits Vladimir Putin. The same thing is true if Trump were able to somehow stop Russia from importing 70 percent of Germany's natural gas. I'm not sure how Putin would be supremely happy with that. So that's why I think that the only people who are really very upset with Trump are the ones who are making uh, the most sort of downcast, cynical read of what Trump was doing here, suggesting that all of this was a front for him just to make an excuse and pull out of NATO entirely. And we haven't seen that happen yet, obviously. You made some points today about about Schroeder, the former chancellor of Germany, and the role that he's playing in this Russia pipeline deal. And I think it's something that people need to, you know, sort of go down to the next layer on and understand. Can you explain that? Sure. It's pretty fascinating. Jim Garrity over at National Review did a good deep dive on this. And, and what he basically suggests is all the people who are really upset with President Trump, suggesting that Trump is colluding with Russia and all the rest of this. Uh, th these people are completely ignoring the fact that the former German Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder, that he actually is working with the, the Russian state gas company to build this pipeline from Russia to Germany, and that he's basically become a Russian agent running around the EU trying to make deals on behalf of the Russians. When President Trump criticizes Germany for, for doing all of that, it, that, that, that criticism, I think, ought to be well taken. In terms of the Putin meeting, what are you watching for in that? And what do you think the president's real goal is here? Well, I think the president's goal is always relationship oriented. And you can see this from, with everything from Theresa May and Justin Trudeau to, to Kim Jong-un and Putin. I think that he'd like to get along with everyone. He says this. I don't think it's all that complicated. I think he wants to get along with people. But the, the policy that comes out, the only real question is, is Putin emboldened to try anything after he meets with Trump? If the answer is no, then it's not a major loss. If the answer is yes, then Trump has sent the wrong signals. We're not going to know that until we also realize wh what Putin thinks of Trump. Does he really think that everything that President Trump says is all the cards on the table? Or does he think, OK, Trump might be saying nice things to me, but if I make a move over that line, then suddenly Trump swings into action? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's kind of interesting, sort of ironic, really, that you've got Justin Trudeau and Theresa May both saying, yeah, you go talk to him. You know, they, yes, we absolutely love the idea of President Trump going in there and talking to Putin. It seems like maybe they want him to uh, be the one to, to sort of be at the front of the line. Um, ben, thank you so much. Great to see you as always. Thanks for being here tonight. Good to talk to you.